Is it going to be promotion? Is that what we're going to be talking about, Blades, as we face West Bromwich Albion? I'm not going to call them West Bromwich Albion uh, because at the moment they're the enemy and uh, we need to do what we need to do. Will we? If not, we've got three other games. So there's points to be had. We are going to have in this match preview Sheffield United and West Bromwich Albion team news ahead of hump day's 8pm kickoff at Bramall Lane. We'd love to see our team promoted Finally at home in front of our fans. I don't think I've ever seen us promoted at home. Can't think of any. Uh, it's always been relying on other results. I just love it if it was us that clinched it. Uh, look at last time out, player connections, and wait until the end for mine. And also, Ollie's score prediction. Hey. Here is Ollie. Tell me about your Wembley experience. Did you have a good time? Yeah, you know what I did? I had a great time traveling down you know i enjoyed a sing song on wembley way i enjoyed a sing song inside and you know we didn't get absolutely embarrassed which you know they're all wins as far as i'm concerned how was your I, wembley experience hal because i know you were I a little a, bit stressed <laughs> oh, i'm always stressed i've lived like that <laughs> uh it was very very stressful i had loads to do in the morning you know i had i had to speak to a lot of different people a taxi driver got lost uh i i, I was thinking i'm not going to make it i had to do lbc greatest hits uh to bbc stuff and and actually meet up with lots of people managed to do most of it if you're watching this and i know you <laughs> and i said i would meet up with you it was just one of those things i tried so hard to get to see as many people as possible but uh what i did do is i dreamt before that we'd score and like those first few minutes i thought here we go illiman's gonna score but it slightly was underneath his feet scuffed it a bit hit it straight at the keeper and really if he puts it either side and i actually think had we scored, it might have been like Chelsea away kind of vibes, you know, where I just Bournemouth <laughs> away. I think I'd have cried and I think yeah. I'd have totally lost my mind. And you compare that with the way that City fans celebrated their penalty, which was like a polite applause. It was like watching a 1920s goal, yeah, and like expecting to jog back to the halfway line and just shake hands. Uh, <laughs> other than that, though, a good day out. And as you say, Lots of singing. Uh, we are going to look back, though. And Ollie, I want your thoughts. In the league, our 1-0 victory over Bristol City. Talk to me. Yeah, you know, it wasn't... I don't think anybody would say it was a vintage performance or that we were outstanding on the day. I think for large parts of the game, particularly the first half, it was a relatively... Uh, Disappointing performance, I suppose, is a fair way of describing it. But as we have been able to find so often in the league this season, we had the moment of quality that other teams just cannot get against us. You know, I've said there it's a fairly disappointing game, but I don't think we've given up a chance. Like they've had absolutely nothing in terms of trying to create chances on goal. And we always have that quality to create a chance. Like you say, we missed it on Saturday. We took it against Bristol City with some fantastic work from Illiman and a great finish from James McAtee. So, yeah, it was a great win. It felt really, really important. Felt even more important when Luton only drew the day after. And, yeah, set us up for what could be a very memorable night at Bramalane. Well, talk to me. Come, come closer. Did you do what I did when Illy missed that chance against City? Did you turn to anyone around you would listen and say, that's it, that was our, that's going to be our only chance? Because I yeah, said that was exactly the, that. Yeah, I literally I looked around everybody around me and went, "That was it, weren't it? That, that was, was it. the one. That was that the was one. It. You get one chance against <laughs> City, and you got to take it. And yeah, and that was it. You're right, but you're right also as well. XG I think against Bristol City was was pretty good. Uh, not that I'm a big fan of uh, <laughs> numbers because I'm, I'm not clever. Uh, so <laughs> let's do last time out. There was two numbers to talk about in this one. Sheffield United against West Brom. Oli. Yeah, so it was back in last February and United came into this one in pretty good form. We were three wins in a row and this was a very comfortable fourth. After a fairly slow start, both teams were kind of just exchanging long distance efforts. Billy gave us the lead with a fantastic goal. Now, this was all made by some magic from Didze, and we all remember what magic from Didze looks like. He picked the ball up just outside their box, threaded a lovely through ball in for George Baldock on the overlap, who cut it back. Billy took one touch, spun on it, and took a deflected effort into the back of the net. It was going in anyway, and it would have been a lovely goal, and was a lovely goal despite the deflection. Not long after that, West Brom managed to mess up an absolutely incredible chance when they were in one-on-one. -on -one. George Baldock with 
one of the best defensive recoveries that I think I've ever seen in my life. He came from absolutely nowhere to stop their lad, even really getting a shot on goal. And then a moment of just madness from Jake Livermore saw them drop down to 10 men. And from that point on, it was a little bit of a no contest. United had lots of chances to put this game to bed. Gibbs White had a really good effort from distance saved. Billy ran in one-on-one -on -one and just managed to hit it straight at their keeper. But we made it 2-0 and we made it 2-0. I don't know if anybody's seen United's Twitter account today, but they've tweeted out a video of this second goal. And it is so good. It is, I think it's a minute 37 seconds of United just passing it around them. Like we, they don't touch the ball for so long. It must be about 30 passes. And it ends with Billy smashing an absolute beauty right into the top corner. It was a fantastic goal and really capped off what was a pretty good performance against 10 men and a really good three points. And I'm sure we would definitely take that again, wouldn't we, Hal? I think we would uh, be very happy with just a fairly relatively comfortable 2 -year. Yeah, that goal that you're on about. Yeah, we don't we don't play like that. Of course, according to the neutrals, it's hoof ball, hoof ball, or nothing. Oof. The hoof is out there. Uh, the hoof, hoof, and the whole hoof. Now let's talk about <laughs> uh, team news. Tommy Doyle and James McAtee. I think they could definitely return to the starting yeah. eleven. Of course, they missed the FA Cup tie against uh, City, and they'd have been dead, dead sad. Ollie McBurney will also expect it, I think, to get a recall in this one. I know that uh, Jebson got the, the nod in that game, and um, I don't really want to talk about giving away of the penalty. I think a lot of people have had their, their say on that one. Uh, John Fleck, Oliver Norwood, maybe they'll drop back down to the substitutes bench. I actually thought they acquitted themselves pretty well. Uh, Hecky has stated that everyone is fit that was before Wembley when asked about Ender being fit. He said Ender is. He trained a couple of days before the Wembley game and we had him down in the squad in case Anel was called away. Uh, so every day they're keeping him training and he's getting closer. That's the end of the quote. Anel's wife at time of recording has not yet had a baby. Ollie, you're on uh, you're on standby baby cam. Um, any any news? Um, I'm just here. I'm just listening. No, nothing as yet. Okay. Sorry, we've got right. nothing breaking as yet, but I will keep an eye. I'm listening, you know, we're checking for dilation, but there's nothing there yet, Hal. <laughs> yes, you really, you really are on the case. Um, okay, let's never speak of that again. Uh, so the baby is still in the stomach. And um, also, Ben Osborne is still out, which uh, anyone who watches this channel regularly will know that I think is a great shame. So we've got Wes, League One, Wes in goal Wes League One Wes <laughs> League One League One Wes are we crazy League One League One Wes are we crazy we've got Anel at right centre back John Egan at centre back uh, Jackie long throw this is what Nick thinks Baldock and Lowe at wing backs he reckons that midfield will look like McAtee and Doyle back in it with Sander Illy and Ollie McBurney pal uh, Ollie some quick thoughts on Nick's 11 yeah I quite like it to be honest I think it's what I'd go for I think Doyle and Macker have got to come back in I think they're really sort of they're how important they are to us has really come to the fore. I feel as though McAtee in particular has just come up clutch at this stage of the season when we really, really needed him. And so he's got to come back into the team. And yet, particularly given that they didn't play Saturday, they've had a rest. It's got to be the right opportunity for them coming back into the team. I think the same for McBurney. I think he did make an impact when he came on on mm. Saturday. He just held the ball up a little bit better, managed to bring others into play a little bit. And so, yeah, I'd like to see him back in the team as well. And Ollie McBurney looked devastated at full time. He fell to his knees. He looked up at the heavens. I've got to feel like surely, Ollie, even when you came on, you knew it was a foregone conclusion. But <laughs> you know, I admire the passion. And that's one thing that Ollie will uh, give you in spades. Uh, we're going to look at the opposition 11. It is brought to you by Indigo Resurrection Bar, which is Chef United Way's dedicated pretty much drinking establishment. You could go there before the game against West Bromwich Albion. And Ollie, you might well be there. Yeah, I'm expecting to be there tomorrow before the game. I'm uh, on a, a, admittedly, if you bump into me in there before the game tomorrow, I might be slightly worse for wear compared to normal because I've got a work due that I have to be on Ooh. before the match. But yes, it is definitely my intention to be there tomorrow before the game for at least one drink. 
I never drink at work, dudes. It's just a little little tip. You always, always want to impress in front of the boss. You never know. Uh, right, let's talk about the opposition. 11. Ollie, take it away with words from your mouth. <laughs> so this is with a lot of thank you to American Baggy. That's at American Baggy on Twitter. Fantastic West Brom fan, really knowledgeable and really helped me out looking at some of their team news. So they've got quite a few injuries. Dora Roche, Matt Phillips, Grady Diangana, they're all out. They've also got two really big ones that have an impact on their squad. That is Nathaniel Calabar, who's been playing really well, who's a good player. Obviously, he's been around at this level for a long time. And Daryl DK, who just has not been able to get a break since he joined West Brom. He's a fantastic player. We'll remember had an incredible season with Barnsley not that long ago, but has just been blighted by injuries ever since. And he looks to have got another quite bad one. They're two central midfielders. OK, Yokushalu and Malumbe have both got knocks, but I'm not expecting them to miss out. I think they will be involved in some form, whether that's starting or off the bench. There's also possibilities that because they lost their last game, they might want to mix it up. So we could see the likes of Kyle Bartley, obviously, who we know quite well at Bramal Lane. Similarly, Tom Rogic could come in, Mark Albrighton could come in, or Taylor Gardner-Hickman could also be in contention particularly with the other injuries to their midfielders. I think he's the one that I'm going to go for coming into their side. They usually play a 4-2-3-1. Now, they've got lots of really, really exciting attacking players. Those three behind the striker in particular are just a fantastic set of players with a lot of names that we'll have been linked to in the past. And I think we'd have been quite happy if they'd come to Bramall Lane, um, particularly, obviously, John Swift being the main one. But let's go through what I think their eleven is going to look like. I think they'll have got Alex Palmer in goal. A back four of Darnell Furlong, Semi Ajayi, Eric Peters and Connor Townsend. I expect those two sitting midfielders will probably be Jason Malumbe and Taylor Gardner-Hickman. As I say, I think he'll come in for Yokushalu in the centre of that midfield. In terms of their front three, I think it'll be Jed Wallish, John Swift and Colin Grant. And they'll all be playing behind Brandon Thomas Asante. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a chance that Mark Albrighton comes into this team, but he's not had the positive impact they wanted since January. In particular, he means if he comes into the side, it usually means that Jed Wallace plays on the wrong wing and his impact is just lessened. So, yeah, I'm not expecting that change, but it's one that we could potentially see. What do we think, Hal? Obviously, a lot of players in there, as I referenced, that we have been rumoured to be going for in the past, particularly John Swift. Mm. How do you feel? I always wanted John Swift. I feel just so relieved when you do the opposition team <laughs> because uh, I can't pronounce half of the names you said and I don't know anyone is because uh, I'm old now. So well done. Well done, Ollie. Can we just pop a well done, Ollie, in the comments, please? And also, uh, if you see Ollie in or around a game, uh, just make him feel the love. Say nice things to him. Tell him to get rid of that shirt. You know what to do, Blades fans. <laughs> Uh, let's look at the opposition view from created by Roy's view. Go to Roy's view from .com. We don't even get paid to say that. We just say it because we like him. In fact, he had a brilliant white laver away shirt that he was wearing at uh, Wembley when I caught up with him. He looked absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Gotten shirts that one. Even I don't have uh, that one here. I used to have it, but uh, we'll not talk about that. Right. This is comments from West Brom fans. So, uh, Chef U won't quite know how to go about it. They may well settle for a point. If they were definitely up, they might have relaxed and hammered us, which, to be honest, they probably will do anyway. <laughs> oh, that baggy's not happy. Uh, this is another one. I hope I'm wrong, but I fear a thumping tomorrow from Chef U. Uh, is this a new one? Uh, fans calling a Chef U? Because it seems like it's baggy's fans calling a Chef U almost right throughout uh, these yeah. these. Comments. I've not really Maybe heard. they just, at least it's not just Sheffield. They've learned something. They just needed one more letter. That's Wait. fine. Chef, you will do. <laughs> just you hold those Sheffield oh, horses. All right. Uh, it'll be the biggest shock in history of football if Albion beat Chef, you. I'm not sure about that. I think. Um, will it? Yeah, I think Radford, when he scored for uh, Hereford against Newcastle, <laughs> might have something to say again about that. Here's a final one an unexpected win in Sheffield on Wednesday, and we're back in it. And here we go. A point against Sheffield. And I reckon we do it. They nearly got through it, but it Hal so Stewart close. had to ruin it. Uh, sorry, that is just the way they do it. Now, the referee for this one is uh, Dean Whitestone from Northamptonshire. <sighs> He's Ugh. taking charge 
of 33 games this season. Right, he's given 95 yellows, which is on the high side, three reds, which is on the low side, and five penalties in 33 games. So, you know, he doesn't give too many. That's about average. He was in charge of our 2-0 away win at West Brom, which is quite unusual, although it's only the second time this season we've had a referee who did both games, you know, the home and the away. Uh, he also was in charge of our 2-1 away win at Wigan. Good so far. Our 1-0 win at Reading. So we've had West Brom, Wigan and Reading. All of these away from home, all wins. But he did referee another away game. This will be his first game at Bramall Lane this season. He refereed our 3 all draw with Wrexham in the FA Cup. I know it was the linesman who flagged, but of course he's the referee. So he yeah. sent off Daniel Jebison. I thought he had a bit of a shocker that day. Not necessarily that decision but lots of little decisions that added up to me mem- remembering who he was. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It was that kind of game. But you know what? It's one of these things, you know, I said at the time that he got caught up in all the Disney FC excitement. So maybe he's going to get caught up in all the Sky Sports excitement and he's going to want to have his name somehow ah. in the papers. And obviously will be the story that day with promotion. So you never know. It could go either way, depending on how fame hungry he really is. Absolutely right. Uh, this next section is brought to you by Parrot Peel, a musical ensemble who are a Blades, and they would love you to support them. Uh, 98 members in 14 different countries. They're a little bit different from most artists. You know how bands normally have a genre. They don't. They make diverse musical tracks, jazz, rock, folk, pop, Latin, bit of dance thrown in there as well and their album doesn't just have 10 tracks stick or twist is a unique album for every single listener no two people get the same album which is truly something i'd never heard anyone else do so do check them out ollie what about giving me your score prediction my score prediction for this one i'm going for a fairly nervous fairly tight at times Home win, 1-0, promotion secured at Bramall Lane this week. That's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking, Hal? I'm thinking you've predicted a Blades win, so that's unusual. Uh, have you taken your temperature? Are you all right? Um, actually, I'm a bit warm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you said I'm, a bit peaky, might be coming down with something. I think you are. Have a lie down. I'm going for uh, what I normally do, a win. Uh, a 2-1 <laughs> Blades win. I think it'll be a bit nervy, but I do think we'll get over the line. And uh, let's celebrate at home. I think that'll just be what we absolutely deserve. What has the uh, American Baggy said? Yeah, so American Baggy, he said that so far this season, when they have got to win, when they've got to the games where they have to win to try and maintain themselves in the playoff race, they've always pulled it out of the bag and picked up the win. He's counting on them to do that again. And he's gone for them to spoil the party and pick up a 2-1 victory, he thinks West Brom. I love a good yank, but not when they say that. Now, player <laughs> connections. Let's have a go, Ollie. Give me a, some that spring to the top of your mind, then I'll run through a few. And please pop yours in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I have no idea why. And I did this in the away game. I have no idea why. But my first go-to choice thought for this one is always Jeff Orsfield. Don't know why. Oh. Terrible at Bramall Lane, but he's always my first thought when you think, who played for us and West Brom? Oh, Jeff Orsfield, obviously. Now, I know as well that we also have another fantastic player for United, one of our legends, Oliver Burke. You know, I only remember the good players. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we'll always have Man United. <laughs> uh, I'll give you Callum Robinson. Well, we'll always have Chelsea. Uh, George Santos, who still believes he got the ball. Uh, you've already mentioned <laughs> Kyle Bartley. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Paul Pesky Salido. We've got an interview with Pesh on this channel. We've actually got one with George Santos as well. Uh, Shane Nicholson. Um, not that particularly memorable as a left back. But, I mean, do you, have you even heard of him? It's not a name that rings a bell. Right. I'm going to be honest you had with that you. Look. It's not. <laughs> yeah. You had that look on your face. And I'll give you one more. Rob Pulse. As I say, please put yours oh. in the comments below. Let's hope that Ollie and I are correct. Combine our scores. And it's 3-1. Enjoy the match against West Bromwich Albion. It's an 8pm kickoff at beautiful downtown Bramall Lane. Hopefully, hopefully we can secure promotion. Until next time. Thanks so much.